Good morning, Covenant Grove. Good morning, everybody. Hello, church. So glad to see you. Buen día. Buenos días, todo el mundo. Los invito a que se levanten. Let's all stand up and worship the Lord with us. And the world was born Life begins and ends in the dust you form Great commanded And the mountains move Fear is losing ground to our hope Señor, fluye hoy aquí más y más. No vas a parar, lo imposible en ti hecho está. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. Sin defeated, Jesus has overcome. Mercy triumph when the third day gone. Darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Tu gloria, tu gloria, Señor, tu gloria go más y más. Que vas a parar, mi posible intento. Everybody sing with us. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We will shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We will shout your praise forevermore. Tu gloria, Señor, fluye hoy en tu más y más. No vas a parar, lo imposible que yo está. Tu gloria, Señor, fluye hoy en tu más y más. No vas a parar. Lo imposible en que hecho está.
beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us. It's Jesus who take a break real quick right now we're going to talk today about nehemiah and about the faith and trust that he had in the lord a cupbearer for artaxerxes he has faith in the lord that he will protect him and be with him as he goes back to rebuild the walls 
I want you to think right now, we talked about trust before, but think about those times where you trusted in the Lord. I sometimes find myself trusting in my own abilities before I go to the Lord. And then when it doesn't work out, I get angry. Let's take a moment now and let's think about those times where we've trusted in the Lord and the Lord has provided. Think about those times that we have spoken to God and He has answered those prayers through faith and love. It's our trust in the Lord that separates us apart from others, that lets us know that we are God's children. So let's spend a minute just thinking about the blessing that it is to be able to trust in our Lord. again, okay? We're going to sing it loud this time. I'm laying loud my life. I'm giving up control. I'm never looking back. I surrender all. I'm living for your glory, oh This passion in my heart is stirring in my soul to see the nations bow all the world to know I'm living for your glory. For the sake of the world of the world, for all the world together, for the sake of the world, for the sake of the world, for light of fire in me, light of flame in my soul, for every eye to see, for the sake of the world, for light of fire in me, light of fire in me. For every knee to bow down, for every heart to believe, for every voice to cry out, burn like a fire in me, for every tongue to confess that you alone are the King, you are the hope of the earth, 
burn like we're gonna sing that again that bridge for every knee to bow down for every heart to in this place today, Lord. God, we welcome your presence here. God, you just ask us to lay our lives down for you. Father, we are your light. We are the salt of the earth. God, I just pray that our lives would shine so that others would see, Lord. We love you. We thank you. In your name, amen. All right, well, we invite our kids right through those doors. Your wonderful kids ministry leaders are waiting for you. Everybody else, turn and greet somebody and say good morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. We're almost back. Okay. We're still greeting each other. Good job. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for turning and connecting with one another. I'm going to try this again. Good morning, everybody. All right. Thank you. Hey, my name is Jill McDaniel. I'm the media minister here. Um, again, thank you for turning and greeting each other. Um, we really love connecting with each other during our service. Thank you, especially to those of you who are joining us online. We're really glad that you're here with us this morning. Hey, all right, I've got four things to talk to you guys about and only three things to show you, okay? So we're going to start with the new version of an old thing, okay? So this is the time of the service where I'm actually going to ask you to fill out a Connect card. And the paper version just got an update. We now have a green Connect card in the chairs. Yeah, hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited about this update. Um, so if you want to do a paper version, we've got the new way to do that, which is um, in the chairs in front of you. We also have a new box in the back that these go in. Anything that we ask you to fill out that's a card will go in the uh, box with the matching green connect on it. Um, so fill one of these out. If you would rather stick with the digital version, that works the same way that it usually does. Text the word connect to 855-846. 1602, and that will still work the same as it usually does, but we want to know that you're here, and we want to know um, if you've made any updates to your information, so you can let us know, like, hey, I got, you know, a new email address or something. That goes on the card, 
And if you have anything that you want us to be praying with you about or any praises that you want to shout out, um, that can go either on the paper version or the digital version. Make sure you turn that in because we pray with these over you every week. All right, so that's number one. While you guys are definitely filling out your Connect cards right now, right? Yes, okay, so <laughs> you're doing that. All right, um, one of the things that we like to do here together to go deeper in our faith roots is we go through books of the Bible together. So we just started our new devotional series on the book of Proverbs. We just finished um, in the New Testament, the book of Romans. We're now in the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs. This is one of the paper uh, devotional booklets with the daily thoughts in it that are available out of the info, info and resources table. And if you grab one of the paper versions, just so you know, there's a little Easter egg on here. So go grab one of these and find that. Let me know when you do. <laughs> um, but if you, again, if you, we do have this available digitally. So we go through these every day on social media. So you can jump in on Facebook or on Instagram. And we also now have an audio version. So if you want to be able to listen to the daily scripture reading, and the daily uh, reflection thoughts, you can go to covenantgrove.org slash Devo, and you will get um, to check out the audio version of that. It's also available on podcasting services, wherever you do that. Um, okay, so this is for our inner life. We're going deeper into the word together. Sorry about my voice in it right now, guys. I should have had water before coming up here, and I didn't. So <laughs> we're, we're just rolling with it. All right, so... This is inner life. This is outer life. We have a community event coming up. This is our kids ministry color run. Yeah, we're really excited about this one. <laughs> um, so this is for our kids and their families, um, not just here in our church, but in our community as well. So they're going to be coming here and um, hearing about the gospel, and then they're going to run around and just get super messy and covered in color, and it's going to be a great time for everybody. Um, but this, like I said, it's a community event, but, you know, not everybody has the young kids who are maybe going to be here. So... Um, what can you be doing? First, pray with us, please. Be praying for events like these that they're reaching out to the community and kids are getting um, these opportunities to uh, maybe connect with Jesus, um, for maybe for the first time in their lives. And you can also be inviting. So Rachel, Pastor Rachel has these invite cards available um, at her table, the kids and youth table. So you can grab one of these, you can hand them out. It's also online on Facebook, so you can share the events. Um, maybe if you're out taking a walk in the neighborhood, you can run into somebody, give them a card, share the Facebook event, um, but be inviting. And if you have kids and want to participate, oh, thank you, Ricardo. All right, two seconds, guys. <laughs> Teamwork. Thanks, Ricardo. <laughs> All right, so if you want to sign up for this, text the word color to that phone number. It's in your bulletin phone, uh, in your bulletin, so you can text that to sign up. If you want to volunteer, talk to Rachel, our kids and youth pastor, and she'll find somewhere to plug you in. Maybe you can get messy with the kids too, even if you don't bring any kids. <laughs> um, but the, these, these kind of um, ways of growing together in faith, either our, our inner life by getting deeper in the word together or um, reaching out into the community with events like the Color Run or the Women's Arboretum trip that uh, they took yesterday, which was really fun. Um, these are all ways that we want to grow together, and the way that everybody can get involved with any of these things, whether you're um, participating in an event directly or praying for it or that kind of thing, we can all get involved by supporting the church financially. So here we go again, guys. Ready? <laughs> the air is on in here. Sorry, guys. It's cold outside, but not in here. We're filling this place up, and it's getting warm. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, as we're talking about giving, I do want to make sure to say that if you're visiting with us for the first time or if you're still new, don't feel any obligation to give, but participating um, in the church by giving is something that we do together as a body. So if Covenant Grove is your church home, please be praying about how you can give here. Um, we have several ways that you can give. You can um, give online or we've got another new box in the back if you want to give um, uh, uh, in person. Will you guys pray with me over these events and the offering today? Dear Lord, we thank you for all these different ways that we have to connect with you and to connect with each other as a part of your body. We pray that you um, take the blessings that we are turning around and giving to the church and you use those to bless the community that we are in and your people here um, in this church. And we pray these things in your name, Lord. Amen. Okay, so we have a special message today. We're going to be hearing from 
uh, Brent, our executive pastor, but first we're also going to be hearing from David Gingerich, who is our, all right, I got to get this in the right order, our church council chair. <laughs> so I'm going to invite David up at this time, and he's going to come give us the beginning of the message, and then we'll hear from Pastor Brent in a bit. I got it on. All right. Well, uh, I had to back away because I did not want to take out the communion table. That would be embarrassing. So, uh, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, you're probably like, hey, we're coming off of Easter Sunday. What are we doing listening to uh, not one of our pastors? And um, what we're doing today is we're uh, wrapping up our capital initiative. So we've been doing this for five years. And uh, I really hope at the end of my portion that we can see what God has done and what God's doing right now and, w and, and then seeing what God's going to do in the future and, and looking forward to that. So uh, driving in today, I, uh, I was listening to a newer worship song that we've been doing, Trust in God, and just dwelling on uh, that chorus, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. And that, just listening to that, and I, I love, I, I'm not always big in, into long choruses, but I just love dwelling in that. Dwelling in, I sought the Lord, he heard and he answered. And that is what this Capital Initiative has been about. It's been about seeking the Lord. What, is, what does he want? Not what we want, what does he want? And, and we really felt called to, to take this next step of expanding our facility, but it has been so much more beyond that. And so today I'm just going to share some of that of, again, where we were, where we are now, and where we're going. Um, and so I want to talk because we still have, we have, which is amazing, we got a lot of new people that may not know how we got into this building in the first place. So I want to share really quickly that, that story. So back in 2016, um, after... Uh, being asked to leave Enox High School after five years, and then moving over to Orchard Elementary, uh, they graciously opened their doors to us. This facility came open. Living Faith Church uh, opened their doors to saying, hey, we want to make sure another church gets this facility, that they're not going to turn it over to some developer to make a bunch of money. They, wanted, they had the heart to see, hey, we want to see a church take over this uh, so we can continue reaching people for, for Jesus. And uh, that's exactly what happened. And we had two months to raise uh, about 100, I think 130,000. We ended up raising 160,000 and got in the door. We were able to buy this sanctuary, the, our, our lovely office that's gonna be coming down soon. And, but all, we have almost 12 acres here. They sold it to us for $1 million. When, when I was looking at land at the time, we, we were all praying and we were, we were looking at uh, where, where could we possibly find a place to call Covenant Grove home. Acres out this way, $250,000 an acre. So do the math. I, it, it, pretty amazing. And that was without any building. So that's where we were. Now I, I want to talk about this whole capital initiative, the building hope. So I'm going to be real careful in saying we're not stopping building hope. We're stopping the capital initiative. We're celebrating the end of that. Um, but this capital initiative was not just about building hope and building a new building. It was about looking beyond the walls and looking um, and, and, and how can we not just support and eventually build a sanctuary, but how can we, that, and, and re, to be real clear on that, it, it is very much a facility. It is not, th this isn't the church. We are the church right here, okay? That, that facility is just to help facilitate, to be able to reach more people, to have more people come, in Sunday, come Sunday morning and get fed by God's word. But, but that's not it. Uh, we said we're not just a church about, hey, just making our facility better. We're a church about making uh, our community better and, and, and outreach. And so 8% of our, the money that went, uh, came in from the capital initiative went to a church plant. And we still have money to, 
we're really hoping and praying down the road to uh, actually plant another church. So we were never just looking inward. And then the other thing is 2% went to global missions. So whether it's local or uh, throughout the world, and I'm going to talk about those in a, a couple minutes. So we began this in 2019. We just felt this calling from the Lord saying, hey, we're running out of space and we need to, to start moving in the direction of expanding our facility. Uh, so 2019, we all know what happened to 2020. Uh, that, that was, uh, you know, again, for us, like we can see that, some people can see that as a negative. For us, we look at that, that was the, the beauty of God's timing. Not that he brought COVID, but if we would have started building right away, and then COVID happened, we wouldn't have needed that big of a facility. And so God, God made sure we were being deliberate and slowing our, our process on that so we didn't get into something that we couldn't afford. And then uh, in 2022, we realized costs go up, right? Lumber, uh, labor, everything went up. So we said, hey, we, we do need to continue expanding this, so we did. And we added uh, two more years, and we, that two years ended in March. And uh, let, me, let me go through, again, just how good our Lord is. The initial goal was to raise $1.1 million, plus another 300000 with a re-surrender in 2022. Total contributions received to date... 1.5 million dollars so that's not me that's not that's not even all of us that that is god because there were so many people that saw the vision of covenant grove and, and seeing what god was doing here that they said i want to be a part of that there's there's people that southern california all over the country that gave money to this capital initiative because they saw how god was working here and uh, so we got, actually had a total of 1.6 million and, and, and there's still money coming in. Uh, now with that, I, I do wanna pause real quick and say, hey, if you, uh, if you still feel called and led to give to Building Hope, uh, we're not just turning it off. So that is something that we need you to do is either you can change your giving and switch that if, if you feel called to, change that to the general fund if you want to continue giving to Building Hope, you absolutely can do that. If you need help doing that, uh, you can reach out to our financial team, reach out to the office, they'll connect you to who can help make that if you're not, uh, but you can also go online. So the Breeze app, for those that are uh, in tune with that, you, you can make those changes there. So um, that's, that's uh, pretty amazing and I'm just in awe of what, what God's doing. So here's some stuff that we uh, have done to date. Building hope through expanding and improving our facilities. So uh, architectural engineering uh, studies, site plans uh, and site plan approval, barn demo, site clearance, uh, door and window improvements to the Cove and Kids Ministry, added additional storage, patio and picnic tables, the play lot for the kids back here, um, and, and then lighting and safety improvements. And then... We planted a church, and uh, so we, we partnered with Modesto Covenant Church and helped plant Radiant Covenant Church because we knew there, there was another part of Modesto that people need to be reached and, uh, for, for Jesus, and so we partnered uh, with Modesto Covenant to make that happen, and we're still supporting that to this day. Um, and, and so continue praying for that, uh, for that church plant as they uh, reach uh, people over in the, the college district. And then building hope for, for the missions. Uh, so we, we did uh, that 2% went to missions and uh, we gave money to um, a, uh, a ministry over in Egypt that helps to combat uh, human trafficking. Uh, it, it, we purchased furniture so that could be a, a house of safety and they could dwell and just uh, get healing from whatever they've gone through. Uh, so that was super impactful. North Dakota Covenant, uh, so it's a uh, Turtle Mountain Covenant Church. 
Um, so here's a, here's a quick irony. So, um, so for those that don't know, uh, Scott, he went to uh, Minnesota, right? Well, guess what North Dakota falls under? So Scott is actually, um, I don't want to say overseeing, but he's mentoring the pastors uh, of that church. So if you don't think God has a sense of humor, I, uh, but uh, I, so I got to talk to him about Friday about that. And so I just thought that was real neat and I want to share that with you. Germany, evangelism, uh, buying t-shirts so they could just talk about the hope of Jesus in, in Germany. Mexico missions, we built w with this money, $10,000 total, um, went to building two homes for two families in Mexico. Two families that have been changed for the rest of their lives because of your giving and what God's doing there. So what's, uh, what's next for 2024? Uh, our priority is, is making sure we're taking care of the facility God has given us. And, and so that means we're going to take some of this money. Yes, it's still about looking at building a, a sanctuary. Uh, the office will come down. We will get a portable uh, in the back. Um, to, so we can have an office and some more ministry space that shouldn't be condemned. Um, and, and so some of, the, some of the stuff we're looking in the, the very near term, uh, complete design work. So you saw that as coming in, and we'll be back there to answer any questions on that, but that's going on uh, right now. Uh, the demo, the office, that's going to happen very soon. Um, and then we're going to add that modular uh, build a multi-use ball court. Again, we're about the next generation, so we want to build facilities that bring our youth to Covenant Grove and, and be able to use that as a, an outreach tool. Uh, kitchen improvements. Uh, all the people on the, uh, you know, serve in that incredible ministry. Our church needs a little work. Uh, our, our church, I'm sorry, our, our kitchen needs a little work. Uh, we're we're going to get there. And then, um, and then on the outside, you're going to see, now that we have a scheme of paint for the new sanctuary, we're going to incorporate that with uh, this one as well. So exciting things ahead. Um, there's lots of things to be praying for. I just try to go through them fast, and I don't think I went as fast as I told Brett I would. But I am going to pray because, and I'm going to continue to ask you, be, please be praying uh, as we, you know, big decisions are ahead. Uh, we don't want to run ahead of God, but we also, we want to go where God's calling us to, to go, and we want to be obedient in that. So with that, let me pray. Father God, um, we are so humbled and grateful for how you have provided um, so many resources, whether it's time, whether it's money, to um, work on this facility, but also to work throughout the world, Lord. And we see what you're doing, and we see uh, that you're impacting lives in incredible ways. And God, we just pray that you continue to use us in, in uh, powerful, powerful ways to be, be a light for you. And God, um, help us as we uh, make big decisions ahead that we just can really discern um, what you're calling us to do, and uh, again, to just be obedient to that. God, we love you so much, and we are so grateful for just everything you've done and everything you continue to do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you, David. We are building hope, <laughs> building hope beyond walls. And we're going to discover what really matters to God today. We're going to be looking at the life of Nehemiah and his wall building project and some experiences of our own as well. So first question, how many project managers do we have here today? Nehemiah was the consummate project manager. Here's one. Okay. Well, let me ask it a different way. How many people have redecorated a room? All right. Painted a wall, uh, planted a garden. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, detailed your car, waxed your car? No? Is that a boomer thing, waxing your car? You, you wax your body now, right? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to ask that question. 
What's next? Okay. The real question is this. When you finished your project, and by the way, you are a project manager if you did those said projects. When you finished the project, did it turn out the way you envisioned it? Or did it kind of go sideways? Maybe a totally different direction. I think so for many of us. I've managed a lot of projects, big and small, but I want to tell you about one right now. Mr. Wheelbarrow. Okay, let's put Mr. Wheelbarrow up. So those are my two daughters about three decades ago, and that's Mr. Wheelbarrow. He made the trip from Oklahoma to Arizona and now to California, and he is here today, all right? But my daughters are grown, and now we have four grandchildren, and they're coming to visit. So I need to fix Mr. Wheelbarrow up to cart them around because Mr. Wheelbarrow does a variety of things, right? So we're going to fix him up. This is a simple project, right? Simple project, just go get a new wheel. Oh, yeah, i got to get the hardware. Oh, yeah, i got to get the brackets. And then you attach that to Mr. Wheelbarrow, who is now Mr. Rust Bucket. <laughs> so there's nothing to attach it to, really. <laughs> so now we have to repurpose. This project's gone south. It's gone a different direction. And so now this is Mr. Rust Bucket. A perfectly good yard ornament, right? <laughs> so things do not always go as they are planned. Even the best of plans materialize in ways unimagined. And David also revealed a part of that with our Building Hope expansion project back in 2020. Some of you were there during that time. We had plans ready to build, 50% plans. We had a great task force. We had architects, engineers, everybody working together. And then it hit. You know what it is. It hit. And we found ourselves meeting in a tent in the parking lot. And I don't know if you were there that day, but I had a two by four in my hand saying, you know, we're going to build someday, but the price of this two by four has gone from $2.50 to $12.50. And it wasn't just that. Well, we had over 400 in attendance on Sunday morning, down to 200. Prices from 2.7 million to 4. million. Can't do this project. But God was preparing us for something else, something different. And through these times, God builds our character, builds within us something that's greater than a wall or a building. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what has happened to a man named Nehemiah, who lived about five centuries before Christ. Let's go and review the life and times of Nehemiah and his, will, uh, his wall building project. So let's turn to Nehemiah 1, 1 through 5. Nehemiah was an incredible project manager, but it didn't start out that way. So let me read Nehemiah 1, 1 through 5. In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, the 20th year of King Arzexes' reign, I was in the fortress, I was at the fortress of Susa. So, let me summarize just that part. So it's five centuries before Christ. The people of God have been scattered about. Why are they being scattered about? Because they didn't follow God. And God said, if you don't follow me, if you turn away from me, I'm going to have your enemies plunder you. And that's exactly what they did. The Babylonians came in and they plundered them. And then the Persians came in and plundered the Babylonians. And so now we have exiles scattered about. And here is this man, Nehemiah, exiled in Susa, which is the capital of Persia at that time, which is now modern-day Iran. So here he is some 800 miles away from Jerusalem. Okay? Han and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah, I asked them about the Jews who had returned here from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. Well, they said to me in in verse 3, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble, great disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. 
Now, why is this important? Because what's inside the wall? The temple of God. And what's inside the temple of God? The Holy of Holies. And what's in the Holy of Holies? Well, the Ark of the Covenant. The very presence of God in that temple. And there's no wall surrounding protecting it. This has been for, for 150 years. The wall has been in disrepair. And so God sparks the imagination and the passion of one man named Nehemiah. Verse 4. When I heard this, I sat down, I wept. In fact, for days, I mourned, I fasted, and I prayed to the God of heaven. Want to see a picture of passion? Here's a picture of passion. One man. Five decades, nobody doing anything. And so here he is. I've been studying and admiring Nehemiah for years. Not just his project management, but his character. And how God built his character through these times. I want to just list four things that stand out. One, he's a man of prayer. God honors men and women of prayer. Because prayer moves us to the very heart of God. When we are at the heart of God, we now hear and listen to what his heart is saying to us. And that's exactly what happened. God imprinted an idea and plan through this process of passion and prayer. Passion and prayer. Then we move. Then we act. And a planner he was. He was an incredible project manager. For months, he spent time in prayer, over six months in prayer before he actually implemented the plan. God gives him the plan of how he's going to rebuild the wall. He gets the king of Persia to supply all the materials in his passageway. This is incredible. God had prepared him for this moment. And now God has blessed his, his passion, his prayer, and his plans. And he's going to go about and build the wall. That's all documented in Nehemiah 4 through 7. He gets all the people to participate. All the families he got together, imagine that, all the different families of Israel, he gets together to participate in rebuilding the wall. They build the wall section in front of their house. Incredible leader. Let's fast forward, all right? Chapter 6, I'm going to put a verse up here, chapter 6, verse 15. On October 2nd, the wall was finished. What? Just 52 days? 52 days after we had begun. When our enemies and surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. That's kind of reverse evangelism, if you will. They realized the work had been done, how? By the help of our God. 150 years in disrepair, six months of prayer, planning, and preparation, built in 52 days. An incredible public works project. Couldn't do that today. This is a big wall. This isn't in just a wall. This is two and a half miles of wall. The height, over 40 feet, that's not quite 40 feet. That's how big the wall was, over bigger than this. Eight feet in width at the top, maybe 20 feet at the bottom. Great project. Got her done. But it really wasn't about the wall. The wall was just the beginning. The wall is what God was doing to prepare Nehemiah to build the real project. What's the real project? To bring his people back to him. To rebuild the people of God. All of chapters 1 through 6 chronicle the restoration of the wall, but now... God's going to call Nehemiah to restore the people to himself. That's the restoration project he's preparing to. Not just for them, but for the hope of the nations. Because the people of God are the light of God. And the light of God to the light of the nations. That's the plan. That's the comprehensive plan. So if we're building hope beyond walls, what really matters to God? The walls matter. They serve a purpose, right? But beyond that, what really matters to God? 
Let's go to Nehemiah 7, because I'm going to try to talk about three things real quickly about what matters to God. So Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1 through 4. After the wall was finished, I set up the doors, the gates, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Levites were appointed. I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the fortress, for he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. We'll stop there. My first point, worship matters to God. What? Where did you get worship out of that? Well, let's go back home there. Let's see. I set the doors, the gatekeepers, the singers, the singers, and the Levites were appointed. So he's finished the wall, but he's already getting the worship team going, okay? Now, I'm not going to do like some people do and just take a verse and just expand it to the you know, nth degree. But what you don't know, this is a sneak preview of all of chapter 8, which follows chapter 7. I'm going to read an excerpt of chapter 8 to you. I don't know if we've got that on screen or not, but let me read chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 2. So on October 8th, Ezra the priest bought the book of the law before the assembly, which included men and women of all children and all children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning till noon and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. Verse 6, Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. All the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands. And then they bowed down and worshipped the God, the Lord their God, with their faces to the ground. They read the book of the law and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read helping the people to understand each passage. And, verse 10, Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, and you know the rest, for the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You've heard that verse many times. The joy of the Lord is our strength. What's going on here? So, Establishing the singers right after the wall is finished. He's getting ready to do a celebration, and that happens in chapter 8. And that's a big, big time of worship. You want to see what true worship is? Read chapter 8 of Nehemiah. We've got people assembling. The people of God assemble. That's what we do. We do that every week. People of God assemble. We read the word. We read the word aloud. We explain the word. That's what the people of God do. We worship, not just singing, but all-inclusive worship. They had the hand things going, they had the singing going, they had all that going. It's okay to do that. This is 500 years before Jesus came. They, they knew how to worship back then. And think about it. They spent years, decades of not assembling together. And so the first time they do that, it's a big celebration. It's a big party. Kind of thing that should probably go on about every week around here, don't you think? Yeah. Here's a model of true worship. Oh, yes, feasting and sharing. Did you get that part? They ate food as they worshiped. And they shared the food specifically with those that didn't have any. Here's the picture. What, worship, what matters to God? Worship matters to God. That's point number one. All right, what matters to God? Character matters to God, point number two. In these few verses that I just read, here Nehemiah delegates some authority. He's getting out of the wall building project, right? And as a good leader, he delegates authority to these two men, Hanani and Hananiah. Hanani, remember him? He's the guy that actually traveled 800 miles from Jerusalem to Susa to tell his brother about the sad state of the wall. Same guy, a guy he trusts, 
guy who's trustworthy. And then Hananiah, here's another guy. What was his qualities? What were his uh, characteristics? A faithful man and feared God more than many. That's all it says. Didn't say he was good looking. Didn't say that he was gifted in many ways. Didn't say that uh, he was the smartest egg in the bunch. It does say he was a faithful man and he feared God. That's who he put in charge of Jerusalem. Character matters to God. It would be enough if it was said about me or perhaps you and written on our gravestone. Faithful man, faithful woman, feared God. That'd be enough for me. Pastor Jack did a whole sermon about fear of God, okay? The proper fear of God, right? Check that out on YouTube. Jack, no commission on this. All right, you're listening. But it's a great sermon. Talent's one thing. Giftedness is one thing. But God looks at the heart he looks at the character. Faithful, faithful in small things, faithful in big things, in the fear of God. Point number three, what matters to God? People. People matter to God. Let's go back to verse four. I'm going to pull verse four out of chapter seven. And I want you to imagine this. The wall's been built. He's getting ready to do the, the worship and the, and the party coming up. But it's been a long process. And so I imagine him walking up on the wall, all 40 feet of the wall, pretty high up, maybe on a parapet, maybe goes up 60 feet. He's walking along, looking in the city, looking out, and it hits him. It hits him like a brick. The wall is built. The city is spacious and large. But there's nobody in it. Look at this. I'm going to read it from the New International Version, verse 4. The city was large and spacious, but there are few people in it. The houses have not been rebuilt. It hits him. That wasn't the project. The wall is not the project. The project is getting the people of God back in. They're out there. I'm up here, and here it is. And so now he understands what he needs to do. And not just that, he spends time in prayer as a person of prayer does. Verse 5, so God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the common people for registration and families. You want a good idea? Spend time in prayer. Because God moves us to the, prayer moves us to the heart of God. That's how it starts. And that's how he got his idea. What's his idea? It's a simple word, invitation. He invited the people in. Now, okay, he's governor. He can do a few things that you and I can't do, right? Like start a registration, start a lottery. He did that. He started with the leadership. Got the leaders, some 42,000 of them, right? And then the invitation eventually ended up to everybody else that wanted in. How do you get people in? You invite them. Because people matter to God. All right. We're going to take a little imaginary trip. Are you ready? Yeah. It's a short trip, okay? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to walk out these doors. We're going to walk into where the bathrooms are, that hallway. And there's a little door on the top on the ceiling. And you pull that down. There's a rickety ladder that comes out. And that goes to the, the attic. And from the attic, you can go to the tower, the tower that you enter into. That tower goes up some 40 feet. So you're going to walk with me up the rickety stairs to the tower. Actually, you're not because it's a faux tower. It's not a real tower. But if you could, we would and we will. So we're walking up there and we're looking around. We're looking around. What do we see on all sides of us? What do we see? Okay, well, we see some cattle. We see some fields, we see some trees, but beyond that, hundreds, thousands of rooftops. 
hundreds and thousands more are going to be built in the next five to ten years. All around us. What's underneath the rooftops? People. People matter to God. And who's going to invite them? They're out there. We're in here. Now, there's different types of invitation, right? About every week, Pastor Jack gives an invitation for people to, to, to follow Christ. To profess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He does that every week. And we're going to do that in a few minutes in our communion. But there's a bigger invitation that we're all invited to do. And that's just invite people. They're out there. They're in the restaurants. They're putting together the tacos and the hamburgers that we eat. They're our neighbors. They're our friends. They're our family members. They're waiting for the invitation. The power of invitation. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, you and me are his witnesses to Modesto, to Riverbank, to Oakdale, and the surrounding countryside. We're it. David told you the history of Covenant Grove. We got 11 and a half acres here. And really, there's not much of a church presence for quite a ways. If you, if you look at what, what is on this side of Oakdale Road, there's tens of thousands of homes out here without a church presence. The five churches that were here are no longer churches or they've changed to something else. We're it. We're the outpost. But we're here and they're out there. The invitation. What would happen if you let God unleash the passion that he's already given you and you and you? You've got it in you to invite people. Not just to this place, but to your homes, to the activities, to the children's events, youth events, all the events. The power of invitation because people matter to God. What has God laid on your heart? What ideas has he given you to invite? You know what matters to God. People matter to God. Character matters to God. Worship matters to God. How about let's rebuild the walls of this community? And we start with invitation. If that happens, these walls will not be big enough to hold the people. In Nehemiah 2.20, the God of heaven will help us succeed. Let's pray. Holy God, you've invited us. Here we are, God. We're your servants, but you're, we're your witnesses. God, help us to be good witnesses to those around us. God, you've been faithful to us. You've been so faithful to us as a church, as a people. God, unleash the passion within us to invite our friends, our neighbors, those around us. As we assemble together, God, as we worship together, as the fires of life build our character together, God, help us to lift our hands and praise you in true worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's been about 14 years since Covenant Grove has every week, well, not every week, so once a month, sometimes twice a week, um, gathered at this table.
the Lord's table, communion, the Eucharist, where we have the cup and the bread. And I'm going to say that in 14 years, we're going to be still doing this because it honors our Lord and we remember the sacrifice. Now, I don't know if you could glean from this story that the people in Nehemiah were desperate for God. Did you pick that up? They were desperate. I'm desperate for the presence of God. Are you desperate for the presence of God? Sometimes we don't know it. We don't know that we're desperate for his word, but he has every answer that we need. His power sustains us. His power builds walls. His power strengthens souls. And his power saves us every day. His power brought us here. He loves you. Psalm 92, 13 says, The righteous flourish in the house of the Lord. Can you bring people into the house of the Lord so they can flourish? Let's do it together so that in 14 years you can say, I was part of that. I was part of that. And Jesus died for that. He died so that we could be one just as he said to his Father in heaven about his disciples, praying, let us be one. That includes all of you. The method of communion that we use here at Covenant Grove is called intinction. When you are ready, you will come forward to the servers on either side of the stage. They will tear off a piece of bread, hand it to you, and you will dip it in the cup. If you need a gluten-free option, please come to this side of the stage. And if you need prayer, please join us either side here um, to receive prayer when you're ready. Rachel. So in Romans 10, Paul tells us that anyone who believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, that they are saved. Now, if I was going to ask you today where you stand with God, some of you might say, mm, or tell me a story. But I'm pretty sure that God wants you to know confidently that you belong to him. And so we're going to say this prayer for the cup and the bread. And if that person is you, that you've waited to give yourself to the Lord, to surrender, you can do that now. Because all are invited to the table of the Lord. Will you bow with me, please? Holy God, we thank you that you see us, that you hear us, that you know our hearts, that you know every single thing about us, and you love. You love with a love that we cannot even begin to understand, and that love is what sent Jesus Christ to the cross and rose him from the dead. Hallelujah. If you would like to recommit or entrust your life to the Lord, you could just ask him, Lord Jesus, I want you in my life. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash it away. Lord, I welcome your Holy Spirit into my life, that from this day forward I walk in the power of your Spirit, that I read your Word, and your power comes to me, because when we open the Word, Jesus is present. And that's it. You belong to the kingdom of God. Not just today, but forever. Thank you, Lord, that you have made it simple and easy. Now, God, in this journey, we ask for your strength to help us trust you more. And God's people said, Amen. And in his word, we read that on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again.
Please come forward as you are ready.
Hello, everybody. I would like to invite all of you guys to stand up. We're going to finish our, our next song. Let's do this together. For being here today, we are building hope beyond walls, doing what matters to God. So stick around with us. If you made a decision today to follow Jesus, would you please fill out one of the blue cards or just talk to one of us? You can put the blue cards in the offering box at the back. You can pray with us over at the cross. We have someone here to pray with you. We have a lot of display boards out there to show you what's going to happen next. Stick around, and I'll try to be out there and mill around, and if you have questions, feel free to, to ask me.
All right. Go with these words today from Nehemiah. As he said this in Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. We usually have some sweet foods and regular drinks, but... (laughs) Share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad. You know the rest of it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's say it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Go today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.